Hey, welcome to A History of Words and Pictures. Well, today, for my 100th video, too, I get to uh, focus on something I really love. One of my favorite works by one of my absolute favorite creators uh, and people of all time. The fiercely creative Alejandro Jodorowsky, who you might know from the documentary Jodorowsky's Dune. Most people in America, if they know the name, it's from that. He's a cult filmmaking legend, author, poet, but also a comic book creator, and this is his masterpiece, The Encall. He started publishing it in 1981 in France, where he lives, and this here is an English copy, and this is the super deluxe, super large version. Uh, only 999 of these were made. As you can see on the right there, the art is by Mobius, who's a, basically a god of uh, comic book illustration and other fields. You put those two together, and you get what Mark Millar called quite simply one of the most perfect comics ever conceived, and probably the most beautiful piece of graphic literature ever drawn. Meanwhile, YouTuber Comic Book Girl 19, who's well known to pretty much anyone who reads comics, uh, called this one of the most ripped off books of all time. So, with no shortage of success, influence, and regard from artists, the amazing thing is how little known this is in the United States. I mean, there's really no shortage of comic book obsessed people in the States who've never even heard of this. I was listening to a comic book uh, podcast one time, and they just kind of tripped over this and recognized Mobius, the artist, but that was about it. Now let's move on to the book itself. It comes in six parts. We've been looking at uh, glimpses of part one, the black ink call. Sounds better in French. Les ink noir. Well, not when I say it, because I don't speak French. <laughs> But anyway, it stars John the Fool, who you can see up there at the left. He's based on the tarot card, The Fool. Uh, Hodorowsky is very big into the tarot. He's something of a modern shaman. Uh, he invented something he calls psychomagic. So he has a lot of spiritual beliefs, and uh, he works them practically all, I think, into the Inkal. Uh, as you can see in this panel here, that's part of it. And I love this panel. Each monster represents kind of a uh, psychological impulse. Here's the cover to part two, the luminous in call. And, you know, the art will give you a indication of, one, how well drawn the whole thing is. Look at that. I love this. It's beautiful. Just Mobius's artwork. Probably him at his best, and that's really saying something. Uh, but the artwork will also give you an indication of how bizarre this comic book is. Hodorowsky is a madman, and I mean that as the uh, highest form of compliment. So he comes up with things that nobody else would, and that are just almost hard to take in. Uh, you can't describe the plot without sounding like a maniac, honestly. Basically, it's a space opera, phantasmagoria, spiritual journey. Now let's meet some of the supporting cast. Here's the Meta Baron, who spawned the entire Meta Baron's uh, comics by Hodorowsky. He's the greatest warrior in the galaxy, and here is Saloon, don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. There's a boy, as you can tell, but there's uh, more to it than that. And, uh, yeah, I can't really get into him without giving much away, and it's hard to describe. When we meet Tanata, she's kind of the leader of a violent revolutionary group. There's her sister, Anima, who's very important to the tale, always beautifully drawn. And uh, we encounter her living in a world of garbage and uh, communicating with rodents called Psycho Rats. Like I said, it gets weird, and uh, that is not even the half of it. Here's Kill Wolfhead. Yes, Kill Wolfhead is his name. And if you can survive the uh, strangeness and shock of his opening scene, then you can make it through the rest of the Encal. Hodorowsky's stuff is not for everybody. Some of the things he revels in, uh, movies and comics-wise, are just not my thing, but uh, I just love him so much, and they have such a unique charm. And underlying wisdom, really. So, uh, here's Depot, greatest sidekick of all time. He's a concrete seagull. He's a great example of how this comic takes things that are just, like, silly cartoonish and then turns them into really surprising moments later. This collector's edition that I got is so large uh, that this is how I'm going to show you one big panel. It's kind of a combination of the White House and Air Force One. On it lives the president, who's kind of the number one celebrity in the world. The Encal was made in the 80s, like I said, uh, and it's prophetic in several regards. Uh, one is actually kind of transgender characters and concepts. Another, amazingly, is the nexus of kind of reality TV, politics, being stranger than any satire world uh, we're living in here in 2017 in the United States. That includes hints of totalitarianism and fascism, and you can see the uh, soldier bodyguard here. I love that look, by the way. It's kind of an Alice in Wonderland type thing. Organized religion is a part of it all. Here's one of the techno-priests, 
with his psycho abdomen floating above his head. There's the techno pope. And because we don't have enough elements, there's an entire alien species and galaxy that plays a huge role in things. They're the Berg, uh, and this is on their planet, where a massive gladiatorial uh, spectacle is happening. And they kind of look like giant featherless parakeets in a way. And here's another species, mutants. They live on the aforementioned garbage world, and you can see how this story takes you from places like that to kind of cosmic, divine locations like the one just seen. And, of course, to space, because I did mention it's a space opera. The world building in this is just second to none. Uh, some, here's one other location where it's basically a golden planet. Uh, you know, things I'm describing as worlds, too, might be part of other ones. I'm not here to give away much of the plot. Here's kind of a crystal palace you end up in. Love the Japanese uh, inspiration here on this water world. It has some incredible visuals and conceptualizations above the surface and below. The way that the uh, art uses color is really noteworthy. And I'm giving you a glimpse of this without giving anything away, but notice how it progresses from green to kind of red, yellow, blue, and you follow the action as the colors change. It's one of my favorite uh, pieces from the whole thing. So you take Mobius's art, which is exquisite, Hodorowski's very unique vision, I mean, as unique as you can get, uh, also what uh, the LA Book Review called his uh, Parade of Thrilling Grotesqueries, as wise as it is ridiculous, uh, as serious as, as it is comical. When I was first reading it, a friend asked me if I liked it, and I said, I can't tell. Of course, over time, I came to love it, and I've gone back and reread it just really slowly and carefully. I think that speaks to the impossible to define quality that this has. One of my favorite combinations of words and pictures Horoski's The Inkal. <laughs> 